occur as you work with and get to know your student over your first several meetings. Your tutor information book includes some sample forms and checklists that can help you in the ongoing exploration of your student's skills and needs. Ongoing evaluations also measure and celebrate your student's progress. Use ongoing evaluations to check off goals and to establish new goals and to adjust your instructional approach if necessary. Ongoing evaluation can occur at specific milestones, such as on a certain date or after a certain number of hours of instruction or at the completion of a specific task or um, at book level. Evaluations might be formal, such as a standardized test, or informal, such as your observation of your student's performance on a particular task. Basic literacy students are assessed based on their background, their reading level, and long-term goals. For example, if a basic literacy student indicates that they left school after sixth grade, they would be assessed on alphabetics and phonics, as well as comprehension and vocabulary. If they have just some high school and want to obtain a high school diploma, then the assessment focuses on vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. We also discuss their overall educational experience and any possible learning related diagnoses such as dyslexia. Currently with COVID restricting our face-to-face -face contacts, ESL applicants are being assessed using a tool from the Ventures book series. Previously, they were assessed face-to-face -face using CASIS, which stands for Comprehensive Adult Student Assessment Systems and is a standardized test for adults that measures listening, oral, reading, and writing skills in English, as well as basic math. In either case, your coordinator will show you how to begin at the appropriate instructional level based on your student's tour test scores. As you work with your student, you'll learn what works and what doesn't, and you can make adjustments as needed. Many adult learners come to us with specific goals in mind. A student might say, I want to get my high school diploma, or I want to pass my driver's test, or I want to be able to talk to my child's teacher. Sometimes a student is enrolled in another class and needs additional help. Other students just have a vague notion of wanting to speak better English or read better. Excuse me. As you work to, to refine your student's goals, Help your student identify strengths and skills that they already have and that they can build on. Do they like to cook? Are they artistic? Some ESL students let their children do all the talking and some basic literacy students have very good guessing skills. What strategies does your student currently use to scope? I'm sorry, not to scope, use to cope. Discussing these things can help the students stay focused on their goals. Earlier in the workshop, we said that persistence in learning is a key factor in a student's success. Seeing progress towards their goals definitely encourages students to persist. But goals often change and evolve, so remember to revisit them frequently. This keeps your student focused on what they're trying to achieve, why it's important to them, and how we will get them there. Be sure to look at the handout packet in the tutor information book for more materials and some examples related to goal setting. Long-term goals are the product of dreams and visions. Short-term goals are how we reach the long-term goals. For example, if you've gone on a job interview, you've probably been asked, what do you want to be doing in five years? This would be your long-term goal. You define your short-term goal by answering, what do you think has to happen to get closer to that goal? Breaking long-term goals into short-term goals makes you more likely to succeed. A mother who wants to help her children learn to read, which would be her long-term goal, can adopt a short-term goal to read to the children 10 minutes a day. When you start the goal conversation, with the student's long-term goals, make sure that the short-term goals align. If the short-term goals don't support the long-term goal, 
the vision will not be achieved. In reality, of course, literacy lessons will almost always support long-term goals in any category. But just be sure that your student sees the connection between the current lessons and their goals. Don't worry if your beginning student isn't able to or is hesitant to express their long-term goals. Don't worry if you start out with simple short-term goals, such as learning the letters of the alphabet or dividing words into syllables. Setting and resetting goals is a journey, not a destination. The key thing to remember is that you and your student are a team and that instruction should be geared towards goals that the student proudly owns. Many planners work with a template using the acronym short-term goals. Each letter in the word SMART stands for a key element of the goal. Creating SMART goals will help you develop an organized instructional plan. The tutor information book includes the information on the slides and more on the topic of SMART goals. The first letter is S, which stands for specific. A goal should be a straightforward statement of specifically what you and your student want to accomplish. Improving English language skills or reading better are too broad. A more specific goal is the student will be able to read the official employee handbook for her job, or the student will be able to ask the child's teacher three questions in English. M stands for measurable. How will my student know when the goal is met? A measurable goal, goal answers how much or how many. For example, the student will write two sentences using three new vocabulary words is a measurable goal. Another example might be, I will write the name and price of four food items from the menu in the restaurant where I work. Keeping track of the number of new words learned, chapters completed, letters written, or forms filled out helps the student to see how much they are accomplishing and how they are getting closer to their goals. A means applicable. Applicable goals answer the questions, is this goal meaningful to the student's life? When and how could this goal apply to other aspects of the student's life? For example, learning to read a menu might be a goal to help the student get a better job in a restaurant, but it could also apply to other activities such as grocery shopping or cooking at home or eating out with his own family. An applicable goal also creates opportunities for transferring knowledge using what you learn in more than one way. A short-term goal of learning the correct sentence structure for I would like can be applied to many scenarios. I would like some coleslaw. I would like a book of stamps. It could apply to different actions such as I would like to buy a new car or I would like to find the post office. R stands for realistic. Realistic goals are achievable. This does not mean that the goal is just doable. Goals that are too easy send the message that the student is not very capable. And goals that are too difficult set the stage for failure. If the student is not meeting the goal in the expected time frame, it's a good indication that there's a problem. It may be that the student hasn't understood what is to be done, or they may need to develop, to develop some additional skills in order to reach the goal. For instance, a person who wants to get a better job may need to learn the concept of alphabetical order to search job listings. Using authentic materials like a real menu, a real job listing, helps to keep the lesson realistic. Set the bar high enough so that accomplishing the goal is satisfying, but also sufficiently challenging for the student to be motiva motivated to keep making an effort toward their goal. I worked for a few years with a person with dyslexia who, when she started tutoring, wanted to pursue a four-year degree, but she was unable to pass English 99, which is a compensatory class in grammar and writing 
that's a prerequisite to enrollment in other classes at the community college. So we worked our way through an appropriate textbook designed for high school and college remedial English students. And we used a blue background and we moved a ruler or index card down the page to help her stay focused while reading. And we talked a lot about her strengths and the conditions under which she was most successful. We also talked about other things that she could do and things that she was already doing that did not require a degree. When she decided to take a break from tutoring, she had decided to focus on creative writing because she liked to write poetry and stories. Grammar wasn't such an issue. In order to make goals realistic, sometimes they need to be gently reassessed or redirected with your student's participation. And finally, T stands for timely. There's a saying, a goal is a dream with a deadline. Both long and short-term goals should have time limits. Agree upon a time frame for each goal. Experiencing success by meeting short-term goals helps motivate students and keeps them focused on the long-term goals. Use calendars, charts, or checklists to help the students see their progress and remain motivated. Keep it simple and adjust as needed. Uh, we do suggest that you join the online tutor chat that is offered by the Frederick County Council, but open to Washington County tutors, or ask your coordinator or another tutor for help or more ideas if you find you need them. Assessment is an ongoing process and it should be something that you can share with your student. Periodic checkups should be routine and a great way to let your student know what you still need to teach them. Tutors need to pay attention to whether the student is lost because the material is too advanced or bored because the material is too easy or whether the material they're using is in any other way not right for them. Sometimes what students really need, especially right up front, might be totally different from what you expect. The material that was recommended for my student had a lot of lessons around getting a job, getting a driver's license and so on. She's a stay at home mom and wasn't looking for work. She already had a driver's license and she has three teenage children. She tested at a high intermediate level because she could read and do grammar lessons very well but she had many listening and speaking challenges. Her primary need was with conversation. At our first lesson, she said, hiding her mouth behind her hand, me no speak good English. I responded by saying, that's okay. That's what I'm here to help you with. She told me she had a hard time understanding what people said because they speak so quickly. So the first thing I did was write down these two sentences and because she could read pretty well, I asked her to memorize them. First sentence, I am learning English. And second sentence, please speak more slowly. I told her people would be happy to slow down if they know you're trying. Sometimes you have to start with teaching something very basic. Also, the way that you measure success might, might be different too. A big, big moment of success for Anna, for my student Anna, was when she went to the dentist's office with her son, who used to translate for her. She went to the front desk, she went in the back, talked to the dental hygienist, talked to the dentist, came out of the appointment, and her son said to her, you didn't need me with you. You did just fine all by yourself. Big success small 